Oh, Instagram improved. It says you are now live. You are now live. Hello and welcome. Let me share this out and then we will introduce. I'm going to share it to love in action. Network broadcast channel. You can join that. And then hello, Cindy Dean music. I hope you're well. I'm going to share this to the telegram. We're going to share it here and here and here and here. We're going to turn off this and we're going to go here and here. You can join those telegram groups by going to lovedandlovable.org, lovedandlovable.org, lovedandlovable.org. Okay. Welcome. Hello. Hi, I'm Tara Priolo. I'm your resident white-facing biracial multi-passionate musician and I talk about the ish that nobody wants to talk about and push you to do the same. I'm doing Love and Action Network's daily boost today at Solar Plexus Chakra Day. So we'll be talking about the chakras. We're going to talk about a Black Liturgy's post and then we are going to be talking about uh, the Melody Beattie at the end. Uh, let's see, Love and Action Network is a peer support mental health organization uh, that provides tools to help you get free and help your voice get freed to put your love in action. It is run by CEO Dr. Flo, who just popped in the room. R Rome? Room. Welcome, Dr. Flo. And uh, also Poppy Wata 33, who is the CEO of House of Mommy Wata, which exists on Loved and Lovable Lane and provides branding services to Love in Action Network. Let me get a little more comfortable, folks. Okay? Okay. So let's get started. I told y'all we were going to do Black Liturgies. I'm so happy Black Liturgies is posting again. Y'all know, like, I feel lost. Y'all have those accounts sometimes, and I, like, take your breaks, y'all. And maybe people feel this way about me. That's in my quantum field. Like, that people miss me. But, like, not in the annoying way. Like, that, like, they find so much impact and liberation and inspiration from the things and the ways that I speak and the, and the, and the, and the embodiment and all that stuff that, um, when I don't post, they like feel some type of way about it. You know what I mean? That's what I, I like. Yeah. I don't know that that's a kind of weird thing to own. Welcome Megan. Um, hope you're well. All right. So black liturgies is one of my, it, it's probably my favorite account. I am not religious. Many of you know that. Um, I do not really believe in God. Um, but I enjoy the depth of this account. And I think it's something that inspires me um, and causes me to think deeper. Um, so anyway, Black Liturgies. Here's the post from, it says seven minutes ago, but it was longer than that now. It says, this is precisely the time when artists go to work. There is no time for despair, no place for self-pity, no need for silence, no room for fear. We speak, we write, we do language. That is how civilizations heal. And that is by Toni Morrison. And I'm going to read it again because there are artists in this room and we need your voice. We need your voice right now in this moment. This is precisely the time when artists go to work. There is no time for despair, no place for self-pity, no need for silence, no room for fear. We speak, we write, we do language. That is how civilizations heal. Next slide. My responsibility as a poet, as an artist, is to not look away. Nikki Finney. I don't know who that is. Y'all know who Nikki Finney is? Somebody I'll have to look up. Oh, it's Dr. Flo's favorite. One of his favorites. It's a long one, so buckle up, y'all. Most of us, no matter what we say, are walking in the dark, whistling in the dark. Nobody knows what is going to happen to them from one moment to the next or how one will bear it. Now, it is true that the nature of society is to create among its citizens an illusion of safety but it is also absolutely true that the safety is always necessary, necessarily an illusion. Artists are here to disturb the peace. That's by James Baldwin. I'll read it all again. 
Most of us, no matter what we say, are walking in the dark, whistling in the dark. Nobody knows what is going to happen to them from one moment to the next, or how one will bear it. Now, it is true that the nature of society is to create, that's not on mute, is to create among its citizens an illusion of safety. But it is also absolutely true that the safety is always necessarily an illusion. Artists are here to disturb the peace. We're going to do some breath work together. You can do more breath work with Papi Wata 33 uh, in Waiting to Exhale, which I think is coming back multiple times a week. But right now, uh, it will be happening on Sunday. So, uh, and if you're wanting to keep up on that, make sure you're joining the House of Mommy Waters um, Halo, their VIP. And also, you can find that information at lovedandlovable.org. Okay. Or you can visit Papi Wata 33 hmw underscore magazine on this platform instagram um and you can follow the the link in bio okay inhale i protect my imagination exhale the artist will dream oh i'm this one might get me today inhale i protect my imagination Exhale, the artist will dream. Next slide. Inhale. Mm, That's a big one. To create is a risk. Exhale. Oh, this one's beautiful. Beauty tells the truth. Inhale. To create is a risk. Exhale. Beauty tells the truth. And the caption just says, to create is a risk. We dream. We dream. 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 I don't remember the rest of it. Um, Whenever I want to, all I have to do is dream. Dream, dream, dream. Anyway, that was on a Muppet CD. (laughs) I had like a Muppet CD that I listened to over and over again as a child. Um, And Linda Ronstadt sang that song. Okay, anyway. As I mentioned at the top today, Solar Plexus Chakra Day, we are moving on to the chakras. Um, you can scroll back in the 100 episodes plus that we have where we're explaining the chakra. There is something coming soon from House of Mami Wata uh, to help follow along the seven-day chakra uh, pillar challenge, which is by Poppy Wata 33. Um, and you can find the nuts and bolts of the chakra there. Um, you can also Google, hello, um, you know... I do not, I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to call you 007. Hello, 007. Um, welcome. How are you today? Hello, Katie Gonzalez, I think. Yes. Hello, welcome. How are you? Um, so anyway, so I don't go over the uh, facts anymore because they are on Google and there is something coming for you to help you with that. Um, but you can also scroll back. But we are going to go over some questions Um, And I'm just going to see what stands out to me today. So reflecting on the solar plexus chakra, also known as Manipura, Pura, because we're weird in English and I think we're like the only language that does the U weirdly. Um, As the Manipura chakra involves exploring aspects of personal power, self-esteem and inner strength. Here are some questions to consider. Hey, Joseph, how are you? self I'm going to do the first one that's on here, self-worth and confidence. Uh, and I'm doing this specifically because Dr. Flo and I have a masterclass tonight at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern, um, 6 p.m. Central. And uh, we will be talking about a number of things, but uh, we're turning all of our masterclasses into deconstruction junction. So you can come deconstruct anything that you want to deconstruct. It is right now free 99 and donation based. You can find all that information at lovedandlovable.org, lovedandlovable.org, lovedandlovable.org. Org. Okay, so self-worth and confidence. 
there's four questions here. I'm going to read them and then I might go back and answer some of them, but feel free to answer them for yourself in the comments or um, later on in a journal or in the notes app or whatever, whatever makes you feel comfortable or just answer them in your head. There's no right or wrong way to do healing work. So how do I feel about myself and my abilities? What are my biggest accomplishments and how do they make me feel? In what areas of my life do I lack confidence? This is what Dr. Flo and I have been talking about all week with me. Cute. Okay. How do I handle criticism and failure? I'll read them one more time for the class. How do I feel about myself and my abilities? What are my biggest accomplishments and how do they make me feel? In what areas of my life do I lack confidence? And how do I handle criticism and failure? Okay. So how do I feel about myself and my abilities? Um, I feel pretty good. I'm a, I, I, right now I'm feeling a little out of practice, uh, because a lot of the things went on pause because I like had a baby and like take care of that baby all day long. Um, but I feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty confident that like if, when I, if, and when I step back into those and choose to step back into those, um, like next week, I'm going to start teaching again, uh, that it will go very well. It will go very well. What are my biggest accomplishments and how do they make me feel? Uh, so listen, Listen, folks, I'm going to use this as a marketing moment. I have something called the Goal Getter that I haven't sold in a very long time, but you can have access to it uh, by going to lovedandlovable.org and joining our Telegram channels. Uh, so the Goal Getter, at the end of every year, forces you to list off your brags. Okay, uh, and not just your big accomplishments, but your little ones too. So I encourage you to be constantly doing this, right? To be constantly going over your biggest accomplishments, to be constantly recognizing that each day you probably have a monumental accomplishment. Try it and see. My monumental accomplishment today is that I know my child well enough to know, to know that it's not hunger. They've started to do a hunger cue uh, when they don't need to. They just need to go to sleep. So that is my accomplishment for this this day, this Tuesday, July 2nd. Also, it's my anniversary and I've been married for eight years and that is a heck of an accomplishment because a lot of people don't make it that far. Okay, in what areas of my life do I lack confidence? Um, like I said, that's what I've been talking about all week. And mostly it has to do with being in the DEI space as a white facing biracial person, um, which I'm very confident as a white facing biracial person, but not always in the DEI space in the way that people want to talk. Um, okay, well, welcome back. I'm so sorry that you got booted. I get it. Thank you. Eight years. Eight years. I don't know who else is here. I think it's cousin Joseph. Oh, no, it's Cindy. Okay. Um, how do I handle criticism and failure? It depends on who the criticism is coming from, but I also, you know, okay, this is like a weird marketing thing. I have something that I built a long time ago called the feedback, feedback request worksheet. Um, no workbook. I don't remember. I don't even remember what it's called. Uh, I will give it to you for free if y'all want it. It is a Canva template. Um, and it just talks about how to request feedback and like questions to ask in the voice studio or in the music studio for feedback from your students. Um, and I encourage you all to explore what it's like to get negative feedback um, when you're not asked for it and who you are willing to take negative feedback from. Because how do I handle criticism? It really depends on the person that it's from, right? Right? Like, if a person that's close to me calls me ugly, I take that more to heart than the random person that called me that on the internet who's a bot. You know what I mean? Like, there are layers to this of how close people are to you and how much you trust them, um, which also is about how much you trust yourself. But it does depend, right? And how do I handle failure? Well, most of the time, I just get back up and learn from it. Um, I would say that a lot of the times that I feel failure or like feel like a failure um or have things happen that are quote unquote failures to other people um it is normally because I'm not in alignment with that particular thing that I'm doing so um a lot of people would call me a failure because I don't sell right like I don't I haven't sold in a very long time um or I didn't sell out programs or whatever and then my voice studio is constantly full, so that's a weird 
thing to say about me. But um, anyway, uh, the reason that I stopped selling was because none of the ways that I was taught to sell aligned with me. And you really have to be in alignment um, in order to succeed, right? Um, and that's that's just the truth. Like you can make money, you can feel good about yourself and still have like still be a quote unquote failure because you're not in alignment with what you're doing. Like you can be really respected and successful in the industry that you're in. And if it's not aligned, it's still a failure, right? That's at least when it happens for me. Or if I'm like not in alignment with the, with the song. Um, yeah. 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 So I either learn from it or I just recognize that I need to get more in alignment with my beliefs, which is like also why um, it does take me a long time to get to a place where I offer things. Like I don't just like offer a lot of random things. I want to say random, but I don't offer a lot of programs. I offer like a couple and a lot of them never see the light of day, even though I have really great ideas because I'm not, I have not fully come into alignment with them right? So like creative liberation, I'm coming into alignment with that title, I'm coming into the alignment with the title of embodiment, I'm coming into the alignment of like, the platform that I want to build on and how I want to pull people and what that looks like in the quote unquote quantum field as Dr. Flo will talk with you all about later in this week, later this week, but it all, it all for me, the quote unquote failure or stopping happens because I am not energetically aligned with the thing that I'm talking about yet, or the thing that I'm considering yet, right? It's the reason why voice audits took forever to come to fruition. Um, like literally like three and a half years, even though it's like an idea that I pondered for, like, I thought was a really great idea at the time, but I needed to come into alignment with that offering before offering it, right? Of that makes sense. I feel like I'm I'm kind of like talking in niche, but um, yeah, our will requires our consent. Doctor Flo says, um, and Cindy uh, said it sounds familiar. And I'm you know if you're comfortable sharing more, I'd be happy to continue this discussion here. Um, the squeaking you hear, I keep forgetting to say it, but the squeaking you hear is my baby in the background. Um, should stay asleep. I think this is the big morning nap. Um, yeah, our, our will requires our consent every time. We must say yes, yes, yeah. And if there if it's like a yes, maybe. You probably, um, you just need to kind of think, be still and know about it a little bit more um, and consider it. Because if it's a yes, maybe, you know, maybe it'll turn into a yes, yes, but maybe there's something about that that you should pay attention to, right? And we don't shit on ourselves here, but for me, that rings true of like, oh, like there's something that, you know, when I talk about choosing a platform for this conversational space that I want, um, and I need, quite frankly, like I'm in alignment with that space being in existence. But when I think about the platforms for it, that there's something about that that is not in alignment. And so I have to go back and like really be still and know that I can take that time to consider it instead of just quickly building another space because, you know, I don't want to move my people again, if that makes sense. Um so, anywho, I hope that makes sense. Share more. If you're interested, if you're, like, listening to this and you're like, ooh, you know, like, I want to parse through that kind of stuff, Love and Action Network is a great place to do that. You can come into the group chats and we talk all day long um, and we're willing to talk to you about your dreams. You can book Dr. Flo for a clarity session. Um, you can book me. I don't know what it's called yet, but you can book me for creative liberation slash branding slash vocal freedom, whatever you want to book me for. Um, we can have a discussion about what that looks like. Um, I'm pretty open to, like, building specific curricula for specific people um if i believe in you know if if our beliefs align and da, 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 da. so there's lots of practitioners that can help you with that and if you're interested in like readings and things like that to help you like feel good about the direction that you're going or feel like you need a sign then you need to um uh not you need to you could get a reading from Poppy Wata 33, um, who delves more into that side of things. I don't do that, but 
he does so book him love and freedom question mark i'm not sure love and freedom yes yes we specialize in this destiny consulting is that for you destiny and quantum field consulting it's always an open mastermind <laughs> Y'all come on in the door. Okay, leftandlevel.org, leftandlevel.org. Let's um, move along here because we are 22 minutes-ish in. Um, and y'all know I like to get out of here in under a half hour. Uh, we are going to do the Melody BD, 52 Weeks of Conscious Contact. Um, you can go back to replays, but this is a book connected with the 12 Strap tradition written by Melody BD. We read this daily in Love and Action Network. This week's theme is service. Um, and those of you that were here yesterday or have listened to the replay know that I don't really agree with day one and day two uh, because I think we need to serve ourselves first, not in a selfish way, but I think we need to serve ourselves and we need to be in ourselves before we can serve others. Um, anyway, day three. When we're wrapped in, ooh, let me try again. When we're wrapped up in what others need, we may lose our self-esteem and our sense of what we need. Remember, genuine thoughtful service always respects both the giver and the receiver. There's a danger in, nope, there's a danger of serving in ways that don't help, ways that foster people's dependency on us and ways that diminish others' ability to take responsibility for themselves. There's also a danger of hiding behind service, using our helpfulness and concern with others to avoid taking responsibility for our own lives. Put a pen in that. Um, it's difficult not to use service as a means to selfish ends. What? It's difficult not to use service as a means to selfish ends. By serving, we get a life. We open up the gateway to receiving more and more ourselves. But if we start focusing only on what we're getting by giving, the entire circle collapses. Service isn't a way to manipulate. This is a bring your own belief organization. I'm going to use the word God because that's what it says. But you replace that word with whatever uh, feels good to you. Um, service isn't a way to manipulate God or other people into giving us what we want. Service is a value to be cherished for its own sake. Um, I'm going to read like the last three sentences again. There's also a danger of hiding behind service, using our, hopefulness, our helpfulness and concern with others to avoid taking responsibility for our own lives. It's difficult not to use service as a means to selfish ends. By serving, we get a life. We open up the gateway to receiving more and more ourselves. But if we start focusing only on what we're getting by giving, the entire circle collapses. Service isn't a way to manipulate love or other people into giving us what we want. Service is a value to be cherished for its own sake. And the challenge of the week is sometimes the easiest thing to give is our money. And the hardest thing to give is ourselves. Um, I'll read that one more time and then I'll get to the comments. Sometimes the easiest thing to give is our money. And the hardest thing to give is ourselves. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Flo says, I will take care of me so I can take care of you. You take care of you so you can take care of me. Yes, I agree with that. Um, and then Dr. Flo says, I was talking about personal responsibility this morning. You were talking about personal responsibility this morning. That is true. Um, I, there's a danger of hiding behind service, using our helpfulness and concern with others to avoid taking responsibility for our own lives. Um, that is, sentence I agree with. Um, there's a tendency in the human population in our society to never take accountability for the fact that like we messed up or we failed or we made that decision. It's always like, well, others, other people don't want to go to this platform. This is, this is my current, um, service going wrong, right? <laughs> is, um, wow. What a comment. Um, anyway, um, like, I'm like, oh, they're not going to want to move platforms, but I want to serve them. Well, okay. And then I make it their fault for why I don't move forward, right? Like, oh, the people don't want to move. Oh, the people don't want to have this discussion. Oh, the people. Okay, Tara. Are they your people then? I hear you, Dr. Flo, saying that back to me and reflecting that back to me. I just haven't come into alignment with it yet, right? 
So sometimes the easiest thing to give is our money. I disagree with that in this economy, but this was written a long time ago. Um, and the hardest thing to give is ourselves. I do agree with that. Lots of us have walls up. Lots of us have um, things to sort of cope and protect our vulnerability and protect our like true selves. Um, I'm a person that really tried to fight against that in my upbringing. Like I never... You know, people, and I, I go against this phrase all the time, but like people, coaches, online coaches will say, don't preach from the wound, preach from the healing space. And I always like hate that. I'm like, no, I'm going to say what I need to say at the time that I need to say it. Right. Um, because I don't think that helps anyone. And I think it puts up a, a wall um, in front of who we are. And then I think we run into these, this space of like performing authenticity, um, which is what a lot of people do online, right? Performing authenticity instead of being who they are. Like you get behind the scenes with them and they're a totally different person than the person that you met online. Um, so I, I do agree with this, that sometimes the easiest thing to give is our time, our money, our energetics, uh, rather than our vulnerability in our person. Uh, but I think to reference the Black Liturgy's post from earlier, like, as artists, we are responsible for giving our vulnerability. We create risk by giving vulnerability, right? Um, so this week is very interesting to me. Y'all can go back to the replay yesterday, which is posted on the Substack, and view that. Um, and the last thing I'll say, because it came up yesterday, was um, no good deed goes unpunished. It's in Wicked. No good deed goes unpunished. Right? Um, I would encourage you to look up the lyrics to that song, and I would encourage you to think about the lyrics. Um, and I'm interested in people's thoughts, so if you want to continue this discussion on the Melody BD this week, go ahead and come uh, back to Daily Boost. I'll be back tomorrow, roughly the same time. It kind of depends on when my baby falls asleep. Um, maybe it gets a little fussy before we have a uh, an, a nappy time. Um, so I will be back on Instagram tomorrow for Heart Chakra Day and to read day four. Um, you can come back to that. You can also uh, comment on the Substack and repost us. You can come into uh, Dr. Flow or Eyes or Love and Action Network's DMs. Um, all of these things are open and available to you. You can come to the Telegram. You can come into the Halo. There's lots of places to have these discussions that um, if you're interested in having them, we're interested in having them with you as well. So, uh, lovedandlovable.org, lovedandlovable.org, lovedandlovable.org. Stay tuned to all the social media. So you're going to want to follow Andre and the Flow on all platforms. That's Dr. Flow, Poppy Wata 33, and then me, Tara Priolo Studio. Um, and there are more people coming if you're interested in being a practitioner of love with us. Um, it's pretty simple. You get some shine as well. Um, and we're happy to take your application and your audition at lovedandlovable.org. That is all for today. Continue to be anti-racist. Be safe. Wear a mask. Do good work. Make good trouble. I love y'all hardcore. You are loved and lovable and ain't nobody can change that. Even yourself, child. And I'll see you tomorrow. Same place. Bye-bye.